Good morning. Welcome to my lab again. This is my dual 833A vacuum tube Tesla coil, which I built about 10 years ago when I very first started Tesla coiling. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I bought a set of plans from Information Unlimited, and this is the result of what you see from 10 years of modifications. I've been working on this thing over and over and over, modifying the primary, the secondary, toroids, and also modifying capacitors on the primary and the resistor on the grid leak. And what you're gonna see is the output that I have right now, and I will go over and show you the different primaries and secondaries that I've used over the years and to see what the different results are. So here we go. You just saw the output on this thing. Um, I've been working on this for several years, and, and in, especially in the last six months, I've heavily modified this thing. Uh, experimented with different primaries, different secondaries, different particular coil setups, and I was going to throw this thing away, but I decided to keep it for posterity's sake and show people where I came from. You're not going to build a Tesla coil and have it look spectacular right out of the gate. And you're not going to be able to learn this thing from reading a book. You're going to have to do the experimentations. And so I'm going to keep this. I'm going to tidy it up and I'll take, I'll take some photos of it and some video of it after I get done. But I want to just you to see this before I get started. I have to give thanks to Steve Ward, Jamie Oliver, Jim Phillips, Ed Wingate, Roger Smith, and many others who mentored me along in this process that I journeyed on trying to figure out how to build Tesla coils and how to make them operate really efficiently. Back in 2007, I built this Tesla coil that you see right here as a dual vacuum tube Tesla coil unit from a set of drawings from Information Unlimited. The drums that was very, very tall, just about this tall, originally called for a primary wound on this piece of plastic and a secondary wound on this form right here. And when I got it running, I was uh, very disappointed in the performance of the Tesla coil and I didn't know why. Going to the different Tesla dons and visiting Steve Ward's site and uh, and some of the other people uh, that had Tesla coil sites, I wanted to find out why. I became obsessed with finding out why can't I get longer arcs off of this thing. One of the things I, I did find out was that when the, when the secondary is very long, the Tesla coil frequency is very low. And very low frequency uh, Tesla coil performance constitute very bushy sparks and the arc length cannot be extended unless you have a single bolt of electric coming out of this thing. We cannot obtain a single bolt of lightning off from the secondary primary which is here without having the just right frequency which is somewhere between 350 and 400 kilohertz. In an effort to find that 350 to 400 kilohertz frequency, I realized I had to shorten the length of the secondary tube and the windings. So recently, within the last four or five months, I started cutting the secondary down from here to here, retuning this primary to the secondary, and then cutting it down further again, getting to this 
concept or this setup right here with my Torah rig sitting right here. This ended up to be around around 400 kilohertz, but I still had short arc length. So then I had to find out, do I need to put more power onto the primary? Do I need to change the capacitors? There's a bunch of variables that I, that I started down this path of, of uh, educating myself and finding the variables that, that made the arc length longer. And I'll get into uh, uh, more of that here just uh, shortly. You can see some of the old pictures uh, that I have put up showing the vacuum tube test coil complete with a single 833 tube and a, with a very long secondary. Once I started modifying the Tesla coil, I threw everything out the window, threw the plans out the window, went to Steve Ward's site and started doing some heavy modification. As you can see here, I went from, from this primary tube diameter and length to this primary tube diameter and longer length. And the reason for the longer length was to try and get the tickler coil up further away from the primary, closer to the top of the secondary. But one thing that I found out was a problem. And that we had severe arcing, which created this carbon track right here on this piece of plastic. And once that carbon track starts, there is no way you can, you can take this thing out, file it out, scratch it out. Once that carbon is embedded into the plastic, this thing will short out forever. So I had to change the secondary, I'm sorry, the primary too. And that resulted in going to a much larger, a ridiculously large tube like you see here with this set of windings on here. This became a good test bed for me and it worked out rare, rather well. <clears throat> but I found out that I had to increase the magnetic coupling between the primary and the secondary diameter. So instead of changing the primary, I went to a larger secondary like this. And that was my setup for quite a long time during some of this experimentation. But I found out I still had arcing problems getting between the, the uh, secondary and the tickler coil, which would sit right around here. And as a result, I started taking and putting a flange on top of the secondary or the primary tube to try and stop the arc from going around and getting out of the tickler coil. And I couldn't solve it with this setup, and I couldn't solve the arc length with this setup, so I had to change again, and I went to an extremely long primary tube, which is from here to here, change secondaries again to a smaller diameter that, of uh, roughly this size, and putting a flange on here and, and going with a much larger diameter for the tickler coil because the, I still had arcing problems at this diameter. So I increased it to this diameter and all those problems went away. All right, we're going to apply a power to this thing slowly and you're going to see the arc emit from the tip of the spike there on top of the toroid and it's going to be going up towards the angle iron and actually touch that angle iron at 34 inches. Here we go. Notice the very, very straight sword-like spark, which is not more than eight inches from the angle iron right now. But uh, we're gonna apply a little bit more power to it and get it to actually touch it. As you can hear it uh, smacking the angle iron up there at 34 inches, uh, we may be able to even squeeze out a few more inches out of this thing. But uh, this thing operates extremely efficient. Let's take a look at the tubes down here. And we're not glowing, we're just a kind of a dull orange on the uh, plate. So everything is working very smoothly. Nothing's overheating real bad. And we're getting uh, extremely good uh, sword like sparks which I was after for all these years.
So I bet you're all wondering the big answer to getting these extremely spike-like single real long sword like sparks is the frequency's got to be right. We have to be able to have a variable on the grid leak resistor so that we can finely tune how long those tubes conduct through the cycle, uh, through the AC cycle. And the position of the tickler coil in elevation in relation to the secondary elevation. And the length of the primary windings associated with the capacitor on, on the uh, primary and that we want the, like it let me let me say this one more time we're trying to obtain the maximum magnetic field that we can between the primary and the secondary and the only way to do that is to have a small primary capacitor to obtain that same resonant frequency we can go larger in diameter, I should say larger in capacitance using a shorter set of windings on the primary, but what that does is reduce the magnetic coupling between the primary and the secondary. Making this smaller and making these windings taller, increasing that magnetic field, increases the arc length and the shape of the arc along with all these other variables in here. And let's not forget about the um, size of the capacitor back on the primary. It must be large so that we don't deplete it as we're using it to obtain that arc line. It takes a tremendous amount of energy. I hope you have learned a great deal about Tesla coils, vacuum tube Tesla coils today. Um, if you want to know more, start doing your own research. Get on Steve Ward's website and start studying what he has written. We have to give a tremendous amount of thank you to Steve Ward because he's the man who wrote this all down. And I've even encouraged Steve Ward to go ahead and write the book. Please, Steve, write the book. Everyone is waiting. I know you have the information. I know you know the information, but please write the book. Everybody have a good day. I'll see you now. Bye-bye.